I believe that um, you know climate action is a learning curve and we're at different places on that learning curve. Yeah, my name is Gayatri and I work at the AT Chandra Foundation. So at the AT Chandra Foundation, we look at a problem and then we try and identify what is the root cause of that problem and focus on solving for that. So we're not a huge foundation which has unlimited pools of funds, which therefore is a good thing because it makes us uh, you know, very strategic in terms of how we tackle these problems. And for us, um, at ultimately these solutions need to scale. And for scale, what we need to do is work very closely with government and with communities that we are here to work for. So in Maharashtra, we had worked on about 3,000 water bodies in you know, the very dry areas of Vidarbha and Maratwara. One can't ignore the problems that we see every day on climate change or because of climate change. So when we were looking at solutions, we could have looked at you know, many, many solutions if you're just looking at livelihoods as a problem. But it's impossible to ignore the fact that your work still needs to be climate positive and so therefore we decided to work at this intersectionality between climate and livelihoods. What we focus on initially, our starting point was always about farmer livelihoods. We were very impacted by reading the news or hearing about farmer suicides in Maharashtra and realizing that we need to find a solution that's long term for them. Of course there were challenges that came about. We deeply believe that this water solution that we have of rejuvenation of water bodies has to scale because the water crisis exists across the country. We started working in Rajasthan. Now Rajasthan, we quickly got feedback from the ground that farmers are not interested in the silt because the silt is sandy, it's, it's not the fertile silt we saw in Maharashtra. Which initially we thought if that's the case, this model doesn't work. It solely depends on farmer interests and their demand. But talking to our NGOs who in turn talk to the communities, we realized that the community still wants that, uh, you know, the mud or the silt because they can use it for things like constructing the roads in their villages, to construct schools. So we said, okay, this just needs a small pivot and we can continue doing this work. I think what it told us was, look, we need to find local solutions and the only way to find local solutions is to talk to the locals. We can't be sitting in our office in Bombay and saying this one size fits all. At the end of the day, the work got done because we got tremendous support from the government. The government put money to get the work done. They were able to problem solve every time we hit a roadblock. And they were there on the ground, on the field with us. So if you went into, you know, in the scorching heat in May, right, we have to do this in the summer months. 48 degrees, 52 degrees. It was not just our NGOs and the farmers on the ground, not just the JCB operators. We had the district collectors over there ensuring that the work was happening. We had the opportunity to present our work to Niti Aayog. The Aayog has approved a budget for a pilot project for us to work in six aspirational districts across three states. I believe that um, you know, climate action is a learning curve and we're at different places on that learning curve. So there's a line in the movie, uh, Don't Look Up, which says you cannot tell people that there's a 100% chance that they're going to die. Right? So I think there are solutions, there are ways to look at positive impact in other areas that are climate positive, give them the space to learn how their work is actually making a positive impact on climate and then use that as a launch pad to get people to do more and more. We need to be having many, many more conversations. We need to know what's worked and as importantly, what has not worked. Um, and I think every actor of philanthropist needs to look at their focus areas and really think about what are the climate adjacencies that they can bring into their work. I think philanthropists are the ones who can take big risks. Um, if you look at government, you look at CSR, they're accountable to either citizens or to you know, their shareholders. Philanthropists, it's their own money. Right? They can look at various bets. Some will fail, but some will have huge positive impacts and that's really what we need them to be thinking about. So I think however large or small um, start making some donations or some investments in the climate space and that's the best way to learn and take it forward further. We focus on really 
what we are trying to solve and realizing the urgency of the problem how important it is for us to do the impossible